gonna do this checklist right quick, man. Shoes, check. Okay, pants, check. Right. Shirt, check. Welcome right. to another episode check. of the Friday Podcast. I'm so uh, Tuesday, New Moon Day. Yo, this song right here is on SoundCloud. Look up Chris Chaos. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my uh to the people who hold it down from what they call. Losing me, stupidly, cool with me. Roll it up, hold it up, pull it up, roll it up. I'm old enough, I'm old enough. Swag on the zillion, Brazilian. All right, so I was trying to think of the word. Those are my sponsors, you could say, because these are the people who hook me up with stuff for the podcast, and that's including the iPod, you know, because if you look right here at this ashtray, that's for the iPod. Shout out to Romo Vino. Uh, that's where all this got started. Today is a special episode, and I know I'm a little late, but uh, what do you expect? I'm a pothead. So, But today is a special day because today is a new moon day. Uranus just went into um, retrograde, so look out for that, especially if you're an Aquarius like I am and a couple other signs. I just looked at Aquarius and I was like, oh shit. And yesterday I felt like I had my heart on my sleeve, so you know, it was real. Also, I want to shout out to my Patreon. If y'all want to support the podcast, I'm going to be selling my artwork, my original artwork. I'll even sign it and put a message for you. I mean, you know, a dollar to five dollars, just anything that will help support the podcast. Because, you know, I want to keep I want to keep it going because I got 22 subscribers now. Let's add 22 more. That's two, 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 two. Bra so uh, you might hear some voices in the background because I don't live alone yet. And you might hear, I think that's about it. Um, so last week, um, besides the crystal of the week, I also talked about a great show called Timeless. It's on Hulu. And it was originally on NBC, two seasons and, uh, and a season finale. So on episode season one, episode four, um, so I'm kind of geeking on this on this energy drink. It was party at Castle Varler, Var Varler, and uh, the episode uh, they go to December 9th, 1944, Northwest Nazi Germany, um, and they actually because you know whenever they have the time machine they gotta they gotta do it somewhere else. So they find the Das Steinhaus Tavern, which is a rendezvous point for Allied resistance in Germany. Now when they get there. They meet this gentleman. We'll make sure it's good on the camera. Uh, Ian Fleming. Now, Ian Fleming is an interesting person because he's the one who created James Bond. James Bond was basically about his life because he was a British spy. Um, playboy, whatever. But he was a spy. Uh, so the reason they go to Germany is because the supposed bad guy, uh, Garcia Flynn, that guy right there, which you find out later, he's not really a bad guy, the way they try to make it seem in the beginning, which makes the show even more interesting. Man, my allergies are starting to hit me right when I start recording. So, the reason Garcia Flynn goes is not to see Ian Fleming, but Ian Fleming helps our main characters. Um, this is the man that Garcia Flynn wants to hand over to the Soviet Union instead of him becoming the head of NASA. So this dude right here, this is the main guy from this episode, Warner Von Braun. And this guy was a Nazi um, and he's the creator of NASA and uh, his rockets brained on Britain in the Blitz Red Cold War. 
Uh, they, he, he took us to the moon, won the space race, but was never punished for his Nazi crimes. Now, when he was in Nazi Germany, he used to hang the slowest Jews to, to get people to speed up their work, right? And this is the guy who created NASA. NASA Nazi? I don't know. That they, they, Just the N.A. Flip that. Whatever. Um, so, Von Braun. Uh, and shout out to Medium.com. So, Von Braun met Hitler five times at the least that we know of. It was probably more. Um, Warner, his full name. Check it out. I thought my name was fucking long for his I got four names. But this cat right here. Werner Magnus Maximilian Friar von Braun, born March 23rd, 1912. Okay, so his father worked in civil service, interwar Berlin. His mom gave him a privileged home. You know, he didn't want for much. Uh, he got a telescope on his 13th birthday. In 1932, while he was in school, the German army went to one of his rocket test launches and offered to pay his doctoral studies. Okay, um, the German army was interested in rockets because of the Treaty of Versailles saying they couldn't uh, build big guns. So they're like, well, fuck it. We can't do guns. Let's do rockets. Oh, I also got this thing that just came in the mail today. I'm really happy about classic box. Classic. Uh, I'll be opening that in a minute. Okay, so Werner von Braun uh, on January 30th, 1933 with Hitler's appointment as chancellor, the Nazi seizure of power began. So that's just the World War II basic fact, um, just to keep up the timeline. Serving in the Kaiser's army was part of the von Braun family's Prussian heritage. Um, if you want to learn more about the Prussians, I'm sure the high historian Roma will have episodes soon about them. Uh, he didn't like Hitler at first, but Hitler bribed and seduced him with money and other personal prizes. I wonder what kind of personal prizes. Yeah. Oh yeah, also, uh, we'll be getting to this pretty soon. The crystal of the week is the red tiger eye. Um, so he was seduced. He was um, convinced to join the Nazi army. Uh, even though he didn't want to at first, but it didn't take much convincing as we will uh, see. So he showed little enthusiasm, but showed no oppositions. Uh, Warner von Braun, Braun uh, excuse me, joined the Nazi party in 1937 and they counted their members. So he was member. So he was a Nazi member. Number 5,738,692. Uh, he had a lifelong aversion to the consequences of his actions. Think about that. I think we know a lot of people in our lives, including myself, who has had, we have aversions to our consequences, but not all of us are rocket makers. It becomes a bigger deal the more power that you're putting into the universe, and especially when it's a negative type of energy. Um, so let's see. World War II started on September 1st. 1939. September's next month. Uh, coincidence, probably. Also synchronicity. Rocket used first on October 3rd, 1942. At the Battle of Stalingrad. The rocket carried a special insignia. It was uh, the sexual image of the Frau im Mond on the moon... Well, the way it was described in the medium, uh, it said it was, she was, it's a female, this model, right? And she's riding on the moon and in front of a rocket. And that was on the first rocket. Um, July 7th, 1943, uh, Warner Von Braun arrives at the Wolf's Lair, which is what Hitler's headquarters uh, were called on the Eastern Front, the Wolf's Lair. Uh, that meeting, the rocket went from the Army secret research experiment into the technical salvation of the Third Reich. So Germany was losing. It was losing. And right in for a little bit, the rocket was just like, you know, just cool. It was just used as a, 
that's the media is to promote like oh we got this cool rocket but the rockets weren't even that powerful at first um in september of 1944 the first v2s which is the the model fell on london and then daily the v2 campaign launched about 3172 rockets at targets in england belgium france and holland uh, in London, 1945, the rocket killed an estimated 9,000 people. That's a lot of people. Um, but it says, so the RAF led bombing raid on Hamburg, Operation Gamora, <coughs> in July of 1943, killed 42, about 42,600 German civilians. So... The Nazis were losing. The Nazis killed about 9,000 people with their rocket, but one bombing and on Hamburg uh, led to 42,000 Germans getting killed. So obviously the rocket was stylish, but it wasn't very effective. Um, US firebombing of Tokyo from the 9th to the 10th of March 1945 killed more than a hundred thousand people in a night so we are the leaders of killing even in world war ii despite the fact uh well when it comes to the battles because obviously the nazis were killing mass people in um in swarms in their concentration camps um and von braun the creator of nasa took part in some of those killings, okay? Now, he didn't really run, as far as we know, a concentration camp, per se. But I uh, I digress. Let's see. So, um, so in the Dutch marks per death ratio, uh, building the rocket was a poor economic decision made from a losing military position. Yes. The Nazis were losing, they were desperate. They decided to have Von Braun, um, you know, make it. And they put money behind it. And uh, let's see. Let me finish this track up real quick. Take a break from all this heavy talk. I wonder if it's gonna work. Of course not because I have to refresh the page because it's special. Um, so in the end, the rockets were just used as propaganda. You know? Um, it did prolong the war, but it did not win it. Okay? So, let's take a quick break. Smoke break because it's gonna get kind of dark. Man. We're going to talk about how he becomes into the United States. So. Sending positive vibrations and frequencies. A lot of people are struggling in this time period. And you cheer for them. It's a life of more. Mike abuses for the future. <coughs> and came right back. Ain't no turning back. You was made to listen, pay attention. You fuck a simple whack rap, and now we ain't feeling them. Yo, this sounds like some World War II shit. You hear that piano in the background? Oh shit, what happened? I might be, I might be wrong So tight when I write these songs Be right, be wrong So tight Hella juice Me, I do the juicing Louis do producing Daddy is here for the side being the father Now let's go harder Ain't bliss, I'd rather be a martyr With MCs and barbers And be starving Ice heads of bums 
dope just to cope for the sun. From the slums, uh, let's talk about synchronicities, right? Fort Hood has been in the news, but and the Fort Hood is in Texas. Now, there's a fort called Fort Bliss that I never heard of, also in Texas, and that's where Warner Von Braun's first home was. Uh, and that was so from on Fort Bliss in Fort Bliss, Texas, November 19th, they released an article. <coughs> 34 year old Warner Von Braun said before the Allies overran Europe. The Nazis were building a 100-ton rocket to strike the United States. Um, that was in the New York Times. Oh, also in the New York Times, December 4th, 45, they showed a blueprint of the rocket. Um, the V-2, the Nazis used slave labor to build the first spaceship. Uh, May Day, 1940. Sorry, this is kind of like uh, sporadic. There was so much research, and I need a, I would love to have a team to help me research one day. Um, so May Day, 1940, Warner von Bronson joined Warner von Braun joined the SS um, on May Day, 1940. So before he even came over here to the United States. So I'm going back in time. Um, he was member number. So so there's the Nazis, right? And then and then a step above the Nazis is the SS. The SS was originally the guards for Hitler. Um, he was member number 185,068. And in four years, rose to major. Um, he wore the Hugo Boss black uniform of an SS officer. There's a picture of that. I didn't print that one out, though. Shout out to Hugo Boss. Apparently, Hugo Boss made the Nazi outfit. So I don't see how people are still wearing Hugo Boss. But apparently, it's still famous. Um, founded to be Hitler's private bodyguards. By the mid-1930s, the SS transformed itself into the central force of Nazi terrorism. So they started off as just, you know, protecting, you know, um, but then they became something way different. Um, so they controlled the Gestapo, AKA the German police. I've heard that word before, it's a cool word, Gestapo, but it's saying German police. Uh, the security police and the concentration camps. Whoa, so going back, so maybe he did have a hand in how the concentration camps were run because he is an SS officer and a high ranking SS officer and the SS controlled the concentration camps. Boom, connections. Uh, SS membership required. So this, I found this interesting. That if you want to be in the SS, you know, they have requirements. You can't just be like, yo, uh, I want to be, you know, like an undercover. Like if you want to like be a spy and pretend you're in the, no, they got, they got to see you gotta, let me show you. All right, let me tell you. So one, you needed to be near six feet tall to be an SS member. You had to be able to document your Aryan racial heritage to at least 1750. And you also had to make an application to Himmler, who's another interesting character. Let me make sure that it gets on the camera. I gotta look at the mirror. This is Himmler. And Himmler sounds like Hitler, but he was even... He, he was he was interesting too um so if you wanted to get married you had to application you had to send an application to himmler something which legendary playboy von braun playboy apparently um was he applied for in 1943 but never consummated something happened they didn't get married if hitler had a vision of the so this is a a quote from medium.com if Hitler had a vision of the Jewish free Europe, then Heinrich Heinrich Himmler had a plan for the Fuhrer's unshakable will to be done. Himmler, he was a right Fuhrer SS, was, as, was an inexhaustible activist of mass death, and now he wanted a piece of the rocket. He comes into play. So first, Hitler, is in charge and he's like, y'all want this right. But then Himmler, who's a S high SS in the right Fjord, wants a piece of the rocket. Um, they built many underground tunnels and factories. We know today that the cabal, as some would call them, 
enjoy using underground tunnels in factories. I wonder if this was inspired by the Nazis. Possibly this was before the Nazis, but the Nazis were heavy into the occult, sacrifice, all that shit. Which I found out recently that apparently Lilith is the first one to want child sacrifice. And that's in the, I believe the Jewish tabernacle. They talk about Lilith, Adam's first wife, um, which is topic for another episode. Maybe the odd pie will go on to that. Um, <clears throat> so Himmler threatened uh, uh, Warner von Braun to work for him. Himmler had SS agents take him in protective custody, protective custody. Um, and actually Hitler had to save Warner von Braun from Himmler. Hitler had to save the scientists from this guy because this guy was gonna kill him if he didn't work with him and give him the rockets and all that shit. Um, December 44, Castle Varler. So this is December 44. This is where the episode of Timeless begins, right? In the, in the castle. And that castle used to be a Catholic castle, but the Catholics were um, outlawed in Germany. Um, let me see. Pretty early on. Because that's what they used to escape. They used these uh, priest, priest holes. And uh, it was behind, you go into the, the, the uh, fireplace, right? And so they had to make these tunnels because uh, the Catholic church symbol and castle filled with Nazis. Oh, in the 1500s, Catholicism was outlawed in Germany. So secret tunnels were made through fireplaces called priest holes. Okay, let's get away from priest holes. Uh, <clears throat> they built many. Da, 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 da. So Warner Von Braun gets the highest non-combat award, the Knight's Cross that night at that castle um so let's see the soviet army was about 100 miles from him in early 1945 von braun and his staff decided they'd rather surrender to the americans the u.s counterintelligence corps found the location of his blueprints after interrogating von braun dornberger tessman and I don't know who that is. Heisel? I wrote fast. Uh, they discovered 14 tons of V2 documents by mm, May 15th, 1945 uh, from the British Occupation Zone. So let's go. Okay, so that's Warner Von Braun. That's his Nazi career. That's his... Uh, that's, that's him at this time. Specifically. Okay? His young ages. Now... Before he creates NASA, he works for the Army, the United States Army. June 20th, 1945, the U.S. Security of State approved the transfer of Von Braun and his specialists to the United States, but it wasn't announced to the public until October 1st, 1945. Uh, so it was kept secret from the public that this Nazi was being transferred, transferred uh, to uh, the U.S. in their in their hands. Uh, many more scientists were adopted. Eventually, he was transferred to Fort Bliss, north of El Paso, Texas. So I feel like North Bliss and Fort Hood are... Fort Hood is, I think, in Central Texas. Because if you see, if y'all seen that video of that, that um, escaped victim uh, who had her head shaved, she was talking about the um, being in Central Texas, underground tunnels, da da da, -da. Um, I need to find that link again. I don't even know if it's still up or whatever. Um, let's see. So while at Fort Bliss, Texas, shout out to Texas, they train military, industrial, and university personnel in the intricacies of rockets, uh, the Hermes Diabetes. Project refurbished stuff. I wrote shit from Germany. So we got a lot of their old shit, refurbished it. <coughs> Shout out to my refurbished 
iPhone. Um, 1950. Okay, we jump forward. He's been in the United States about five years. Um, this is the start of the Korean War. Ron and his team were transferred to Huntsville, Alabama. And that was his home for a while. <clears throat> he stayed in the South. I find it interesting that the Americans that sent, brought him over here were probably in Washington, D.C., and they decided to keep him in the South. And me being from the South, I know that some sometimes Northerners look down in the South for many reasons, and I wonder if that's why they kept him here in Texas and then in Alabama. It could just be coincidence. <clears throat> it could have been the perfect atmosphere for rockets. I have no idea. Anyway, so... In 52 to 56, he developed the Redstone rocket. Then, as a director of the Development Operations Division of the Army Ballistic Missile Agency. That's a mouthful. He was, let's say it again, the director of the De Development Operations Division of the Army Ballistic Missile Agency. All right, Von Braun with his team developed Jupiter C. A modded redstone rocket. Shout out to Minecraft. That's where I learned about redstone. Um, and shout out to Jupiter. Because you can see Jupiter at nighttime. Oftentimes, if you look in the sky in a certain... Uh, I forgot what direction it is. Maybe west. In the sky. You'll see Jupiter and you'll also see Saturn. Um, it looks like stars. And see Chris Chaos. Um, so anyway, I thought that was a cool name. The Jupiter C uh, succeeded launched the West's first satellite entitled Explorer 1 on January 31st, 1958. So in 1958, Jupiter C launched the our first satellite because of Warner Von Braun. Uh, some say he was a former Nazi. But if you do some research and study into um, Argentina and how many scientists and top ranking Nazis got away after World War II, um, and then you find out that in Argentina and South America, there are these um, Nazi cities. Um, I mean, just do some research and it's there, it's all there. So it's like, uh, maybe he stopped being one, maybe he didn't, right? Um, maybe he said he stopped being one, maybe he in real life he didn't, like secretly. But well, let's see. All right, so uh, that's all debatable. So um, that event, the Jupiter C launching in the West for satellite, was the event that signed the birth of the American Space Program, led by a Nazi. Um, he was frustrated in the United States when Nazi scientists in the Soviet Union were able to... All right, so the majority of the scientists when came to the United States. Some of them went to the Soviet Union, right? Which led to the space race. Um, the Soviet Union Nazi scientists were able to experiment more in... I.e. Sputnik. Uh, they, gave them, they gave them more freedom and money. And then the American press brought up his past and affiliation. So he had a little more trouble, but... Obviously, he, he was still successful. In 1952, Von Braun published his concept of a crude, not crude like C-R-U-D-E, but crude like with people, with the crew, space station in a Collier's Weekly Magazine series article titled, Man Will Conquer Space Soon. And that was during the Cold War. Okay, so the Cold War, as many of us know, was like, uh, there was no actual war, it was just a lot of talk, building missiles and all that shit, and that was all done. It was, it was the Soviet Union in America, but they were using these intelligent Nazi fucking scientists. Um, he got, he gets older and, you know, he, he, he's fine, he's successful here. Um, he might not be the happiest Nazi in the world, but he did all right. Uh, <clears throat> so, um, interestingly enough, Von Braun began working with Walt fucking Disney at the Disney Studios as a technical director. Okay, so we can get, I, don't, I didn't 
Disney is probably a topic for a whole nother session. Maybe the odd pod we can go into Disney because Walt Disney has his own affiliations and there's theories and there's conspiracies and there's facts. I don't know enough to talk about it. I do know Von Braun was and probably was at the time that he worked with Walt Disney as a technical director. Uh, you know, and they worked together. I think there is proof out there that Disney was a Nazi, but I'm not going to say that 100%. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, some say he turned to Christianity to pacify his own conscience. Because <clears throat> he had so many people killed. In the show Timeless, they show him as not really... Um, he just says, you know, if I worried about the people who are affected by my creation, I wouldn't create it. I need to... And, and then the Rupert, uh, the black guy who helped create this, um, the spaceship, um, tells him like, like how does it, cause he, he feels bad because he created it. And so many people have gotten hurt because of the spaceship. And the guy was like, well, if you thought about that first, you wouldn't have thought about this. You wouldn't have built the spaceship. Not spaceship, time machine. Um... So anyway, NASA established uh, July 29th, 1958. One day later, the 50th Redstone rocket was successfully launched. And the Army Ballistic Missile Agency, the Army Ballistic, what a cool name, Ballistic. The Army Ballistic Missile Agency, ABMA, uh, was a development team led by Von Braun special Nazi uh, and we're transferred to NASA transferred to NASA space camp was also created by Von Braun to get kids into space which is I mean that's not a bad thing you know not every person who's done bad shit is just a does everything bad and not everybody who does good shit does everything good you know we are creatures of different shades Right, so I can't judge this motherfucker, even though I want to, because he hung Jews that were slow as fuck. But he also got the United States into space. He also made space camp for children. Who knows if those programs were innocent or whatever? I got my double check the camera, make sure it's the recording. Shout out to Snoop Doggy Doggy Dog, so cool. Um, <clears throat> so you know, it's just interesting to know all aspects of an individual. You know what I mean? Like finding out that the Dalai Lama was racist and finding out, I think it was the Dalai Lama. I mean, it's heavy, it's really heavy, but knowledge and wisdom are created for, there's no such, I mean, some say ignorance is bliss, right? But ignorance will not bring you ha true happiness. True happiness comes from knowledge and wisdom and learning. Um, all right, let's get back to it. So, NASA, da 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 da, Von Braun became. Oh, sorry, I put a quote because I when I was working on this, I was also listening to Joey Diaz and Red Band on the Joe Rogan podcast, which is moving to uh, Texas. Shout out to Texas, another synchronicity. Texas, Texas, Texas. All right, anyway. Um, but Joey Diaz said, You say to yourself, Wow, we have a government that ices their own people. Yeah, they iced their own people. Anyway, Von Braun became the NASA Center first director on July 1st, 1960, and was so for almost a decade. And uh, he ended, he left the NASA Center, uh, he resigned as the first director January 27, 1970. His dream came true. July 16th, 1969. Man on the Moon. 1969. That's uh, when my mom was born, too. Uh, 66, 67, Von Braun went to Antarctica. So there's a lot of theories about Antarctica. It's an interesting place. Um, Hitler sent people there. Um, and I guess the United States sent fucking Von Braun. I bet you he didn't want to go. Um... It's funny because I think that they still kind of like knew that he was a nice, so they didn't treat him like as a full American, like if he was a straight up American. They would send him to Antarctica or keep him in Texas or Alabama. 
instead of letting him go to Cali or, you know, Hawaii or something. I mean, I think he would have been more happy in Hawaii or California because of the tropics, but they kept his ass in Texas and Alabama. Anyway, I love Texas, but they kept him in El Paso, Texas at that. Um, which is great. It's a cool city. I'm just saying, like, that's not what people think of when they think of the United States. They think of Los Angeles. They think of New York. They think of Miami and shit like that. But they didn't let this fucker go to those places, or at least not live in those places. Um, okay, so on March 1st, 1970, whenever he retired from NASA, Von Braun and his family moved to Washington, D.C. I guess they finally let him go a little closer, but even D.C., ooh. After NASA, uh, Warner Von Braun became vice president for engineering and development at the aerospace company Fairchild Industries in Germantown, Maryland on July 1st, 1972. Interesting. Um, helped establish and promote the National Space... Wait, where am I at? Institute, a precursor for the present-day National Space Society. He did that in 75 and became the first president and chairman. I wouldn't be surprised if this dude laundered a lot of money and sent some of that money to his people that were hiding in Argentina. At that time, you know what I'm saying? Speaking of time, it's time for another quick break. And then we can wrap this up. Again, shout out to my supporters. Sponsor. Catch me on Patreon. Chris Chaos 420. Instagram. Chris Chaos 420. Twitter, Chris Chaos 420. I don't mind, I do this all the time. I do this all the time. Go ahead and live vicariously through me. I don't mind. Check out my SoundCloud, Chris Dash Benitez Dash. The seizures, more eagles. Shout out to King Solid. 832. I 
So, all right, let's finish this up, man. As y'all saw during the track, I opened up this cool little classic, uh, classic bot, classic computer thing that I ordered a long time ago and I forgot about it and it came in today. And it's fire. I got it for my son, but I wanted to open it up, see how it looks. It looks fire. Check that shit out on Instagram. Um, okay, so let's finish up with this fucker, Warner Von Braun, so I can move on to more positive shit. You know what I'm saying? Some positive shit, because we love positivity. I love positivity. Um, positive is about Warner Von Braun is that we get to learn about this fuck. And that's positive because, you know, we don't want no Nazis and we need to know the truth. The truth will set you free. All right. So, da 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 da. Help promote. Da da da. Became, okay, 76, 76, the bicentennial. Uh, he became a scientific consultant to Lutz Kaiser, the CEO of OTRAG, and a member of the Damier Benz Board of Directors. I don't know if that is. I'm assuming Benz, Benz. Uh, the 75 National Medal of Science was awarded to him in early 77. White House ceremony, but he was too sick to attend. Maybe all that radiation shit he was fucking with. Fucking with the Jews and shit got that karma guy. Um, during his stay at Fort Bliss, Von Braun proposed to his maternal first cousin. Because the Nazis like to keep it in the bloodline. Just like the British. And they get these fucking diseases and shit because they're interbreeding with their own relatives. Anyway, so, so Von Braun, this guy who worked with Disney, the guy who created NASA, the guy who was uh, almost the second in command with um, fucking Hitler and Himmler, married his first cousin. Anyway, the US gave him permission to marry her in Germany. She was the first, or his first daughter's name was Iris Kareen, born at Fort Bliss, 1948. Then he had Margaret Cecile, in 52 and Peter Constantine in 4 15, 55. Um, Braun became a naturalized citizen 1960 in the United States. All right. He lived his happy old life here after committing all the war crimes. Fuck Von Braun, but we had to learn about him because um, he's an important character in our history. And if you want to go after former, a lot of people want to go after former characters right now, right? Because of uh, faults and shit. How many of those people were fucking Nazis, bro? Let's take this fucker down from all the names. Let's 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 cancel his fucking uh, his uh, peace prize or whatever. All right, so let's get into the crystal of the week. Let's get into more positive shit. This was a gift to me from my sister. Shout out to Yvette Speaks Cat. Um, I love getting crystals when they're gifts because somebody thought about you and they felt like you needed that for some reason. A lot of times that crystal finds you, I believe, for a reason. That's why when I go pick out my own, I don't like, oh, this one's bigger. This one, I just get the one that I just see first, whether it's small, whether it's like one of the uglier ones or some shit, doesn't matter. All right. So this is called a red tiger eye. There's at least three different kinds of tiger eyes. I have a blue tiger eye. And I had a gold tiger eye, but I gave the golden one to my son. Um, shout out to, if you stay in G-Town and you're by the Metaphysical Way, this paper's kind of dirty, but the Metaphysical Way in G-Town, Texas. So this vibrates to number four. Number four is the heart chakra. Okay, so this vibrates to number four, the heart chakra. But then it's also good for the solar plexus which is your stomach, liver, digestion, blood sugar. It's also good for the sacral chakra, which is your urinary tract, your adrenals, your uterus, if you have one of those. And these are just, those are the physical properties, right? Of those, I can, I'll go into the chakras in a bit because for instance, the heart chakra, right? It's number four. Um, it's your lungs, blood pressure, immune system, but it also is for love, hope, compassion, flexibility, and balance. Okay, the solar plexus chakra is your stomach, liver, digestion, and blood sugar, but it's also 
reflects your energy, your higher self versus your local self, and it's also perfectionism. Um, the sacral chakra, um, it, it, it's the ur uterus, urinary tract, adrenals, but it's also your, uh, it reflects your intimacy, your emotions, your boundaries, your addiction and trust, all that. So this works with all that. Oh, and the root, the root is number one. Uh, that's the reproductive system and your legs. Uh, it, the emotional aspect is security, grounding, sexuality, and survival. So this is one of the the, the root is one of the, it's, you know you gotta you gotta focus the root one before you can go to the next one. Keep going. Um, so it's good for protection, wealth, good luck, mental clarity. Um, and I spend I spend time I spend like solo time with each crystal for a little bit before I. Um, I like to meditate too before I, I put them on Chris of the week. This one I didn't get. It's been a hectic week. It's mostly it. most everybody has a hectic week right now because their kids are starting school and all that. Um, but it's good for good luck, mental clarity, increases personal power, enhances psychic abilities. Uh, <clears throat> if you believe in that, and, you know, um, I personally do, but we can get into that later. It balances your lower chakras, as we were talking about. It enhances practical perception. It heals issues of self-worth. It can help uh, heal issues of self-criticism as well. It unblocks creativity. Um, it aids in recognizing one's talents and abilities and faults um, needing to be overcame. Uh, it alleviates depression. Uh, you know, it can help. You know, I'm not gonna say that this crystal right here just by itself will alleviate all your depression. No, you still gotta, um, you might need medication, you might need cannabis, you might need an anxiety pill, um, but you also need exercise, you also need water, you also need sunlight, you also need to um, watch what you intake visually and as well as chemically. Um, but this, once you get all that shit balanced and you still feel like that, then try this. Um, Balance between extremes, vitality, strength, fairness. So the red tiger eye, okay, um, overcomes lethargy, lethargy and provides motivation. It speeds up metabolism. Also, it speeds up metabolism, supposedly in cannabis and caffeine. But you don't want to overdo it with anything. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you don't want a giant one of these landing on you because you will squish you to death. Um, it looks cool. It reminds me of uh, like Grand Canyon type stuff. Now I gave my son Gold Tiger Eye because it says because he's starting in seventh grade. Um, he's taking advanced classes, and then the Gold Tiger Eye says aids in paying attention to detail, uh, warns of complacency, excellent to have for tests and important meetings. And you know, I think it's really cool. I think it's, uh, it might, it might, kids, because they haven't been hardened to um, life yet, they're more susceptible to positive energies and all that. And I think with kids, especially starting school in this, in this strange way that they're starting school, I think crystals, the right crystals can help. So yeah, red tiger eye. Um, Next time I'm gonna show y'all exactly the chakras. I wrote them down, but it's it's uh, it's a lot. And I've already been <coughs> it's been a heavy topic talking about Nazis and shit. <coughs> Thank y'all for tuning in, tuning in, tuning in to a Friday podcast. Remember, Friday is a is a, is not just a day. It's a it's a it's a feeling. Right, so you can get that Friday vibe even if it's a Tuesday or a Wednesday, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so, yeah, let me see what I want to let y'all go on today. Something chill, maybe. Uh, something positive. Let's see, let's see, let's see. 